Hello and welcome back to Planescape Torment with me, Barden. So, last time uh, we found a note stuffed in the mouth of one of the zombies and we cut it out. And then there was um, like a folding um, puzzle, which um, we figured out after a few attempts. And we got a new triangular um, earring but we can't use it because we can't identify it so maybe that's something we can use later but um, these zombies seem to be um, particularly profitable so I think we'll uh, check out some more of them so let's check out this one first this female corpse is making the rounds slab to slab in the room her hair is nodded into a long braid and looped around her neck lies a noose someone has stenciled the number 1096 onto her forehead her lips have been stitched closed so we can't do anything with the stitching on her okay let's say nice braid a uh, nice braid the corpse does not respond you doubt it even knows you're there Farewell then. Okay. Let's try the next one. This corpse is shuffling from slab to slab. Banjing the corpse is lying there. The number 396 is carved into his left temple and his lips are st stitched closed. You notice the corpse is carrying a roll of bandages in his hand. The bandages look usable. Okay, let's try and take the bandages. You snake your hand out and take the roll of bandages from the corpse's hand. The corpse doesn't even seem to notice. He continues going through the motions of bandaging the bodies. Okay, that's nice. Let's leave him in peace then. And let's uh, check. I don't think we checked everything in this room, did we? We probably did, but I'm going to check again just in case. So we, found, we found a logbook somewhere here, didn't we? Okay. Next one. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so then the guy down here was the guy that we found the um, the page from the missing page from the logbook. I think we've examined you already. The eyes of this corpse are set close together and the eyeballs themselves are slightly skew. Yes, we have. Okay. Farewell to you and we've looked at you as well. So let's just keep going and see if we can find someone else to say hi to. Oh, and also, I never remember to put my um, timer on. <laughs> Not until I've hit record at least. Okay, let's continue. Oh, we need Mort as well. Yeah. Can't be leaving Mort behind. Okay, there's a zombie down here. The shamanic corpse gazes at you with vacant eyes. Number 821 is carved into his forehead and his lips have been stitched closed. The faint smell of formaldehyde emanates from his body. So, seen anything interesting going on? As you dress the zombie, it blinks in surprise. Hey, what? You're not a zombie, who are you? Updated my journal. The zombie is trying to respond behind stitched lips. He has a peculiar, half-frightened, half-angry expression. Who are you? What you want? Okay, so let's look at our options. I'm looking for a way out of here. Who are you? Tell me who you are, or I'll call the guards. Lie. Why I was looking for you. I'm asking the questions here, zombie. Sorry to trouble you, whoever. Okay. Let's try this one. <laughs> Tell him we were looking for him and see what he says. Why? I was looking for you. Looking for me? Why? He squints at you. 
You got a message for me? Yes, I have a message for you. What message? I have your new orders. I don't have a message. Never mind. Sorry to trouble you for a while. I've I have new I have your new orders. He narrows his eyes like he's trying to figure you out. What orders? Tell me your mission. I need to find an escape route where I may leave unobserved. I am here to relieve you. Give me all the information you've gathered, all your possessions, then leave. I am here to help you in any way you need. Your orders will have to wait for another time. I will be back. Okay, so if we do this one, he's going to give us stuff. So let's try that. I'm here to relieve you. Give me all the information you've gathered, all your possessions, then leave. Updated oh, my nice. journal. Looks like it was the right one. Or a good one at least. I don't think there is a right one in this game. The zombie looks disappointed, but he shrugs and begins to fish deeply into his stained tu tunic. Being quiet. Dusty's being quiet. Nothing new since last report. After a few moments, he hands you some items, then grunts. Here. Judging by the smell, they must have been hidden so as to avoid turning up if he has, if he was searched. Me leave in short while. Leave? How? The zombie nods. You want out? Go to arch on first floor, not west room. You need finger bone, shape of crook. He holds up his index finger and bends it into a crook. When you have key, go to arch, jump to secret crypt and turn escape from here. Secret escape route. He nods eagerly. You can rest there. Crooked finger bone? Where am I going to find one of those? Updated my journal. He shrugs. Must be one round somewhere. Look in storage rooms on upper floor. Maybe there. Alright, I had some other questions. What were the what was that portal you mentioned again? Listen, remember. The zombie sounds angry. Arch, first floor, northwest room. He holds up his index finger and bends it. You need finger bone bent. You go to secret crypt, escape route. You can rest there. There was something else I wanted to know. Do you know something named Farad? Farad? The zombie frowns briefly and thought. Me? Here he live in high somewhere. He shakes his head. Not nowhere. He frowns again. Thus he's very mad. They not like Farad. Hive? Shroomed outside this place. Why don't the dustmen like Farad? Updated my journal. He's a collector. Brings debtors to mortuary. Sells them to dustmen. Brings lots of debtors. Dusty's not know where he gets debtors. Jinky's putting Burks in dead book. So basically the Dusty's think that uh, Farad's been killing people to bring them here and get his um, coppers. Okay. I'm missing a journal. Have you seen it? Do know some Burke peel you? Oh, do know some Burke peel you? So basically asking if someone stole it from me. Okay. Can you tell me anything about Val? Scribe. Shrugs. Old. Yellow. 
There's nothing more to be said, I suppose. I want to know something else. How did you get to look like that? Me good at disguise. Me also good scars. Me wear lots of embalming fluid. Me make good zombie. The zombie giggles through the stitched lips, then taps his head. Dusty stupid. Yeah, they're the super ones, all right. Um, let's see. That disguise is pretty good. Say, can you disguise me as a zombie too? He looks you up and down for a few moments, mumbling to himself, then nods. Uh-huh. Me need jar of embalming fluid. Points at the scars on the chest. And some needle and thread. Okay, well, we've actually got those because he gave us the needle and thread and we had embalming fluid already. Here you go. The zombie takes the items from you, then sets to work. Try to hold still. The zombie liberally applies the embalming fluid to your body, then stitches up several of your scars. Working from your feet upwards, he stitches up your scars, then finishes off the disguise by stitching up your lips. <laughs> Thanks. The zombie holds up his hands. Careful. Talk pulls stitches out. Ruin disguise. Zombies no talk. You got to talk. Talk slow. Careful. Now take heed that no one expects zombies to talk. If you speak to someone as a zombie, you're on the risk of exposing your disguise. Mm-hmm. I understand. Updated my journal. The zombie frowns. Disguise won't last long. Embalming fluid dry up. Stitches fall out. He shrugs. Probably not last outside mortuary. And no running. You run, you ruin whole disguise. Okay, so I guess this is only a temporary thing then. Right, so he was an interesting character at least. Let's move us. I love how we're now walking as a zombie. But it should give Mort a chance to catch up to us. Yeah, there he comes. Okay, so nothing in there. Hopefully Mort, Mort is still coming. Let's check. Yeah, here he comes. Okay, let's check our inventory. Okay, we now have a knife. We don't have our scalpel anymore. We have a knife. Oh, our scalpel is there, but it's not on us because we're zombies or Pretend if we walk around with a knife, I guess that wouldn't work. Okay, well, um, let's check if there's any zombies in here. I don't think there are, but it's worth checking. And this gate, I think this gate is locked. Because the first time I played, I did up to meeting Evie and looking around. Yeah, and that door was locked. Yeah, it needs a key. Okay, so we need to go up. So we're on the third floor, and he said the first floor was the way to get out. <laughs> Mort doesn't look too happy with us walking like a zombie. He's just bashing his, his skull into our back every step. Okay, so up we go to a new floor. I'm gone. <laughs> well, he does look, he does walk slow. But I guess we need this if we're coming up here. Ah, 
have to run this way, okay. Make something to search here. Let's do that. Okay, we got junk. Okay, we'll take junk. And got a dusty over here. Okay, we then got needle and thread. Wow. After all the things we did to get the initial one. Okay, let's continue on. We could have actually I didn't even notice there, look. Could have come out there. I just saw the gate, saw that the steps seemed to be winding up more. I thought, ah, we have to go to the top. So let's go and check here. So some kind of, oh, don't do that. There's some kind of, is that fire or lava or something on the ground there? Maybe it's like the um, crematorium or something? We've got nothing in that one. Okay, so let's check this one. Nothing there. Okay, so let's. So we've got skeleton workers. So these maybe are people who've been here many times and now they're. or a very long time and now they're just a skeleton. The skeleton number 748, according to the number chiseled above its brow is odd only in that some of its teeth appear to be false ones made of reddish brown stone they're clearly not valuable however as its caretakers would have otherwise removed them okay let's examine carefully someone has taken care to bind the bones of the skeleton with leather straps woven around the body in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and tendons the straps are secured to metal bolts punch into the skeleton's joints. This skeleton looks like it has seen a great deal of service. Many of its bones are chipped and its numerous fractures are bound with sealant and foul smelling glue. So do we, yeah, let's try this. Whoa, chief, that's vandalism. Those bolts are probably the only thing holding that bag of bones together. Necromancy only goes so far with these old fellas, you know? Oh, I didn't want to cause any permanent damage. Oh, it's not a problem. Mort does a strange bobbing motion that he think might be a shrug. Just wasn't sure if you knew that or not. By all means, go ahead. Okay, so let's try. You pull at the iron bolts, but they're not strong enough. But you're not strong enough to pull them out. They've been hammered in pretty tight. Maybe if I had the right tool, I could get them out. Hmm. I may be back, Bones. Okay, let's leave the skeleton piece, because if we say anything, the dusty is going to um, spot us. Hmm. Wonder if this grey beard would mind if I borrowed his body. Greybeard? Greybeard, you know, geezer, old fella. Yellow dog, old. Well, I don't think he's in any position to object. Why not take his body? Morse studies the skeleton for a moment and shakes his head. Nah, I'd need a fresher one than this and something with a little more dignity. This one's all creaky and fractured. And you're not? Oh, you're a sack full of laughs. More glares at you. Besides, you're one to talk, Burke. Mirrors beg for mercy when you're around. Oh yeah, at least I have all my parts. Mort snorts. You're not quite sure how he managed it without lungs. Let me tell you, Mort. There's nothing more satisfying than walking around, swinging your arms, 
Breathing the crisp air through the lungs. It's great to have a body. I'm not sure how I'm doing all, saying all this soon though with my um, lips sewn shut. I'll have you know, I'll have you know that helping you escape the preparation room has been added to my growing list of regrets, Mort snorts again. I should have let you rot some more, that is. Glad you feel that way, let's go. So I think we maybe ruined our beautiful budding relationship with Mort there. So we've got a dusty, don't talk to them, what about this guy? to examine you. Come back. There we go. So if that is lava, then we shouldn't really be standing in it. I don't think it is then. This skeleton seems particularly old. The leather straps binding it together, cracked and worn. The word repent has been carefully engraved into its forehead with some amount of skill. A rough hand later chiseled 996 on both its temples. So we already tried that. Let's examine this carefully. Someone has taken care to bind the bone scale with a trap woven around the body in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and tendons. The straps are secured to metal bolts punched into the skeleton's joints. This skeleton looks like it has seen a great deal of service. Many of its bones are chipped and its numerous fractures are bound with sealant and foul smelling glue. Okay, well let's try. You pull at the iron bolt, but you're not strong enough to pull them out. Okay. So we obviously have to find something. I don't know why we need to pull the bolts out, but it looks like we have to find something to do that. Yeah, look, we're slower than the skeleton workers. <laughs> so we're, we're a true zombie. Okay, what have we got here? We've got more needle and thread. Wow. How about this guy? Oh, there a guy, zombie coming. This corpse slightly misshapen head appears to be held together by a number of narrow metal bands bolted directly onto the skull. A rusting iron plate over its left eye has the number 475 etched into it. Its mouth is bolted shut and it reeks of a bowing fluid. So the last time we did this, we found an undercover guy. So let's try that. So seeing anything interesting going on, the corpse continues to stare at you. Okay, let's leave the corpse in peace then. We can't search that. There's someone else over here. Okay, that's nice. Yep, wait there until we come to you, please. Please wait. <laughs> We're not going to be able to catch you up. Stop, thank you. Okay, the skin of this female corpse is heavily tattooed with intricate patterns. The skin of her brow has been peeled back so that the number 1148 could be chiseled into the skull beneath. Her mouth has been sealed shut with th thick, rough stitching. So doing anything later. The corpse continues to stare at you. Farewell then. Okay, so you're not one of the people that can help us. Okay, let's check over here. We got a mortuary sanct sanctum key. Oh, why is it sitting on a shelf? It's a bit weird. And maybe that opens here. Maybe this is the sanctum. Oh, this is like another staircase down. So we won't, we won't be going down any 
time soon. We're just going to be checking this floor. Let's go this way. So maybe that key is for something else then. Okay, we've got another zombie worker here. Let's go say hi. Oh, Mr. Zombie. Okay. The number 1146 is carved into the forehead of this working corpse. Its lips are sewn together with coarse black thread. The entire body is covered in horrible scars, worse even than your own. As if its owner had been burned to death, its nose, ears and several digits are missing, presumably charred away in some long ago conflagration. As you block its path to get its attention, it stops and gazes at you with vacant eyes. Okay, so see anything interesting? And just, yeah, staring. Lots of staring. Okay, let's check skeleton worker. Can't check the body. This skeleton has either seen a great deal of combat or has fallen down one too many staircases. Both its arms and legs have been broken, rebuilt with the aid of leather straps and thin iron rods. The front of its skull bears the number 863, but the back of its skull has been caved in, forming an empty cavity. You notice that someone has taken advantage of this and took the rolled up piece of parchment inside the skull. Well, let's take the parchment out of the skull then. He slipped the parchment out of the worker's skull. Oddly enough, it looks as if the skull cavity is intended to store messages. A tiny string is attached to the, apartment, to the parchment from a hook bolted inside the skull as if to keep the parchment from accidentally fa falling out. Let's unhook the string and take the parchment. You unhook the string and glance over the parchment. It looks like a reminder from one of the mortuary custodians. Judging from the note, this skeleton seems to be a walking messenger of sorts. As you take a second glance at the skeleton, you realize it has stopped in front of the slab because it can't figure out how to move past it. Okay, well, let's read the note. So let's get out of here. Let's leave the skeleton in peace. This rolled up piece of parchment, parchment appears to be some sort of messages, message the skeleton the mortuary was supposed to deliver. This is the third and last request for the pry bar. If, you, if it has been misplaced, tell me and I shall go to the hive market and purchase another. I have no objection to maintaining the, the contracted workers, but I've been trying to repair the skeletons and the bolts are wedged and so tight I can't get them out. Also, some of the locks on the storage cabinet on the third floor have become stuck again due to the heat and I need the pry bar to snap them open as well. If the pry bar is indeed lost, I will see about procuring the services of a locksmith and having the cabinet locks replaced. Your aid in, the ma in this matter would be appreciated and readable signature has been scrawled beneath the message. So that's interesting. So the pry bar, bar if we can find it, uh, we can take the uh, bolts out of the, zone, or the skeletons. I'm not sure why we want to. Um, but also we can open the locked cabinets that we found on the third floor. Okay. So now let's look around a bit more. Okay, so we've got this room here. Okay, so we got Dustman Embalming Charm Lesser, let's take that. And Mortuary Task List, let's take that as well. Okay, we'll check all the other stuff before we look at the task list. Nothing there. Okay, we got a Clot Charm, okay, take that. container is locked so we need the pry bar for that and then we got some bandages okay good now where else can we go here so 
can't go over there. Let's check here. We already did, didn't we? Okay, um, oh, let's look at this one. This mummified corpse looks like it's bound for the crematorium. Okay, okay well, um, we're gonna see what we do next time. Um, we may go to another floor, or there may be something else to do on this one, but that does bring us to the end of this particular episode. And I really do hope that you have uh, to see you all next time. Goodbye.